you know. I know, and bless you for that. But even when Mr. Edwards was alive, the past few years, he couldn't help much with the decorating. Some of the orange has been collecting dust in the attic. Well, our friend Ethan is supposed to come help, but we don't know where he is. I'm sure he'll be here soon. I'm just so excited to have you in my home. Tell you what, I'm going to go bake some cookies and look for my famous hot chocolate when we wait on Ethan. That sounds great, Mrs. Edwards. Yes, that's so sweet of you. I'll be back in a jiff. Now, where is that Ethan? He said he'd be here. Yeah, but you know how boys are. Yeah, well, I'm afraid I do. They all have such commitment issues. Hey, girl, <laughs> is there someone talking about cookies and hot chocolate? Ethan, you're late. Where have you been? Oh, about that. I've got something to tell you. Hello. <laughs> uh, Ethan, who is that? That is what I want to tell you. This is Michael Moore. Maybe less. What? Here we go. Yes, the Bible does not say that there are three wives, just that there are three gifts brought. We assume the rest. But that can't be right. What about the song we sing every Christmas? We three kings.
up in the sky. Way up there, I wonder why. I know they have good news to bring and ought to sing, but they're just saying, Glory! Glory to God! They're just saying, Glory! Glory to God! Glory! Glory to God! They're just saying, Glory! Glory in the highest! Shepherds in the fields below, sheep are with them toe to toe, waiting for the heavenly song, but something's wrong. They're just saying, Glory! Glory to God! They're just saying, Glory! Glory to God! Glory!
It's my fault. What? Yeah. I was the one who distracted everybody with my Christmas myths. I was just trying to be cool, to try to fit in. But now I ruin Christmas for everybody. No, no, Michael. That's not stretch the truth. We've just been having a little talk about that, haven't we? Yes, ma'am. We've had a fine time talking about all the distractions at Christmas, how they can keep us from celebrating the birth of Christ at Christmas. What do you mean? Michael, why don't you tell the others while I go get some new mugs for the new arrivals? Okay, well, Mrs. Edwards said that there are some facts about Christmas that nobody knows about, and we shouldn't get distracted by that. So the truth about Christmas isn't written down anywhere? Well, I didn't say that. Well, where can we find the whole truth about Christmas? Mm -hmm. That's where Michael and I were when you guys came in. You see, the facts about the first Christmas aren't written down as far as we know, but the truth about Christmas are written down everywhere in God's Word. I don't get it. Michael, do you remember one of the verses we talked about? Uh, yeah. I like the one in Galatians 4. Do you mind telling the others something about that verse? Um, sure. It says, when the time had come, God sent his son as a child in Bethlehem. That's right. And he, <laughs> and he grew up to be a man, but he wasn't just a man, though. He was God, too. Good, Michael. Yeah. And, he, and Jesus died for us so that we can be saved. <coughs> and if we believe in him, we can be God's sons. We can talk to him like he's our dad. Hey, Michael, I've got two dads, one on earth and one in heaven, and we share them both.
Probably not. There's a difference between knowing the facts and knowing the truth. Very good, Michael. You are listening. It's pretty cool. For a kid. Thanks, Ethan. Now, let's drink the hot chocolate and get back to decorating. You know, I think I'm going to like having a brother. Me too.
right, there was one song we, uh, we accidentally skipped, and I know a lot of you are excited to see your kids do their solos for that, and our kids have worked so hard, I would hate for them not to get a chance to do it. So kings, uh, or shepherds, rather, shepherds, head back to hurry up and get your costumes on. I just want to thank you so much uh, for uh, being with us and, and just really enjoying this Christmas program with us. Are our shepherds back there getting dressed? All right, let me know as soon as you're ready. And, um, and you know, we truly believe... Uh, at the Gateway Church, we say this all the time, what happens at home, you can say it with me if you know what I'm going to say next, is more important than what happens at church. And that's so true because we believe that strong, godly children are raised in the home. This is one partnership, one tool we use to try and work with you as parents. And so if you have kids that want to get plugged in uh, to a ministry that is exciting, that is engaging, and that partners with you to raise godly kids. We encourage you, if you're looking for a church home uh, this morning, uh, I really don't think you could find a better place than the Gateway Church in our kids' ministry. All right, you guys ready? All right, so we're going to do one last little scene here uh, so you guys can enjoy, enjoy this, all right? Let's give them one more big hand, okay? <laughs> Fantastic. 
These are fun seasons. And Guy stole the show this week. <laughs> Good job, buddy. That was awesome. And, oh, man, we love all our kids. And thank you, Pastor Mark, for working hard with them. Yeah? Yeah. How many know that even the best of plans don't always go like you want, right? <laughs> and that is so true when it comes to children's ministry. And so you would go with the flow, and that's fun. Well, this morning, I don't believe it's an accident that you're here. This morning, we have created this service with the kids talking about Chris Myth Busters, all right? all for the idea that we want to discover the truth about Christmas. And we know that there's all kinds of distractions that keep us from the truth, aren't there? There's all kinds of things. The craziness of the season. I was at the mall yesterday and I saw about half of you there just in the maybe 25, 30 minutes that I was in and out. I saw a ton of you guys there. We could have had church yesterday at, at the mall. Consumerism, decorations and parties. Gifts and more gifts and gifts galore. Family, work, and uh, we talked last week a little bit that this time of year for some of us can be kind of stressful, isn't it? And I look at the distractions and we say, boy, you know, how can we find the truth in Christmas? Yeah. And there are questions that we address, aren't there? How many wise men, the date of Christmas, the innkeepers that we talked about, the angels, did they sing or did they just say it? The toilet brush, I'm not sure how that fit in exactly. But we, we look at these things and it's like, what can be trusted? What other questions kind of come to our mind when it comes to Christmas? And maybe you've wrestled with some of these. Can the biographies of Jesus be trusted? Is there scientific evidence to support the Bible with when it concerns Jesus? Did Jesus fulfill the attributes of God? What evidence is there? And again, it, what maybe you've, you've struggled with some of these questions. You're here this morning. You're saying, yeah, those are good questions. And I would just say it's good to explore. It's good to know what you believe and why. And there are resources available to help us dig deeper in those areas. But here at the Gateway Church, we understand that we, uh, we honor God's Word as truth. And what the Bible says is true. And when we talk about Christmas, it's all about God's greatest gift to mankind. That God became flesh. That Spirit took on flesh for us. The infinite entered into a finite world. And we know it's reliable. It's trustworthy. The eyewitness accounts, when we look at what the Word of God said, it gives us confidence that the Gospels are reliable, that we can trust God's Word. When we line up scientific evidence against what God's Word says, we know that the Word of God is trustworthy. The attributes of Jesus, when we study who Jesus was and who God is, Jesus fulfilled every attribute of God. The fact is, is that Jesus is our Messiah. He is our Savior. But you know what clinches it for me? And for most of us here, probably, is the evidence that Easter has. If we fast forward a few months, see, we can understand that anyone can claim to be the Son of God. I could say, hey, I'm the Son of God. Or any of you could stand up and say, yep, that's me. But you know what proved it? was his miraculous signs that followed his life. The authority of scripture that he had, he was a great teacher. The fulfilled prophecy, we talked a little bit about that last week. Over 300 prophecies fulfilled. How about the resurrection? Yeah, the empty tomb, and then the eyewitnesses. Those that saw Christ after he came back from the dead, that were willing to die for Jesus and for the sake of spreading the good news. We know that Jesus laid down his life for us. It was spiritual payment. We accept this gift, the greatest gift of, to mankind, ultimately by faith. And 
yeah, there might be questions. There may be times of doubt. There may be distractions that will keep us from that message. And we all struggle with those things at times, don't we? Maybe there's past hurts in our lives that keep us from experiencing what Jesus has for us at Christmas. Today is about discovering the truth of Christmas. And maybe this morning you are here and you are wrestling with the idea that Jesus would be a Savior, that, that He would come in, that He would help us in a, in a season like this. Well, the fact is, is that all of us have sinned. The Bible is clear that all have sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. You, many of you know that verse. The fact is, is that we need a Savior. Jesus cannot accept sin into heaven. And the fact is, is none of us are worthy without a sacrifice. And Jesus made that sacrifice for us. As we talk about the truth of Christmas and discovering that truth, trying to avoid the distractions in our lives this morning, there, we are going to give you an invitation to accept what Christ has for us. Amen. She's responding to the altar call, right? Amen. 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 Thanks. Appreciate that. This morning, more than anything, as we prayed and we've asked God to just touch our hearts this morning, we want your hearts to be open to what God has, to the truth of who He is and what He provides for us. Just yesterday, uh, I got a call from a 17-year-old student of mine that I had in Children's Church back in Dayton, Ohio. When we left Dayton, Ohio, he was 11, going on 12 years old, and he's 17 now. And he actually Facebooked my wife and said, hey, can you get, can you have Pastor Ben call me? And, I, and so, of course, I did. I called him yesterday. And he shared how the last four years of his life have been just like a living hell. Turmoil in his family. He started smoking weed at, uh, at age 13. So for the past four years, uh, started taking prescription drugs in the last couple years uh, that some of his friends were kind of piping his way. And about two and a half months ago, he ended up at school before he went to school, he took so many pills that when, by the time he got to school, uh, uh, they had to call the 911 and to pump his stomach and get him to the emergency. Now listen, Austin was a good kid. He played the drums for us in our kids' band. And something got his attention. Something distracted him from what God had best for him. He ended up in the hospital for several days, and on the day that his family took him out of the hospital, he told me this yesterday, his dad, Gary, who was a good friend of ours, took him to his grandpa's grave. And that's what it took for Austin's heart to be melted. And his heart melted, he broke down, recommitted his life right at his grandpa's grave about a month ago or a month and a half ago. And what happened is that fast forward a couple weeks, he got re-baptized, and God was doing some incredible things. And see, Austin is going to experience Christmas a little different than he has in the last four years. He knew the truth of Christmas. He understood. I mean, we, we talked about that in children's ministry. He understood. He had a great family that walked with him in, in uh provided all kinds of spiritual insight for him. But he got distracted. And this morning, I wonder how many of us are being distracted by the things of the world, by the craziness of the season. Maybe you're distracted by some of the things that were even mentioned in our play today. The fact that Christmas isn't on Easter. I mean, Christmas isn't on December 25th. The fact that there may or may not have been innkeepers, how many wise men, those types of things. Or maybe even a little deeper, you say, man, I, I looked at the, the story and wondered about the truth 
could Jesus be the Son of God? And I just want to say, we accept the gift of Christmas by faith. We look to God's Word, which we believe is reliable, and then we decide in our hearts to serve Him or not. And the fact is, is that no one can make that decision for you today. There's a great verse in the Old Testament where Joshua says, as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. And it's kind of a, out of a, a time of uh, where he had been away from the Lord and they're recommitting their lives to the Lord, the children of Israel. And he stood up and he said, look, as for me, I choose to serve the Lord. And this morning, I want to challenge you. I don't know where many of you are with the Lord today. But is it possible that all of this was created all this was put together today for you to come to a decision point, to avoid the distractions, to, to look beyond the things and so easily get our attention to focus on what Jesus wants for us. That's our heart this morning. And then we'd be able to take that and to share that gift with others. That's why we're here today. So I'm going to ask everyone here to close your eyes, bow your heads. And I just want to challenge every ch every child that's here. I know that you've been praying for your family members and for those that would be here, guests and others that may sh have showed up here at the Gateway Church. And I want you to be praying right now that God would be softening hearts, that there will be those that will receive Christ this morning. So the children, I'm asking you to pray specifically. And I want to ask those of us here, I want to ask, where is your faith this morning? Do you believe in Jesus, that he is a Savior? Are you serving him? Are you allowing him to change and to transform your lives? Today is Decision Sunday. Christmas 2011. I want to give you an invitation to accept Christ into your life. And so everyone's head bowed, eyes closed. If you are here this morning and you do not know for certain that you are a believer, that you have Jesus in your heart, would you respond just by lifting up your hand? I'm not going to embarrass you. I just want to know so I can pray for you. If you're here this morning saying, yep, that's me, pray for me this season. Yeah. All right. Anyone else? saying, yep, that's me. Pray for me, Pastor. God, come into my life to save me. Amen. Anyone else? Yeah. I want everyone to stand this morning. Amen. We got one young man that raised his hands. We want to pray, and I want to pray a prayer together. A miracle prayer. And it's not the words of the prayer that are miraculous. It's the words that when we mean them in our hearts. And so would you pray this prayer with me, everyone included? Would you say, dear Heavenly Father, come into my life. Save me from my sin. I'm sorry for the things that I've done wrong. Cleanse my heart. Make it clean. And I will do my best to serve you, to love you, and to honor you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And you know, for the one that got saved this morning, for maybe a rededication in someone else's heart this morning, we understand that we have a responsibility as believers to go and to share the good news. Amen? And we want to end on a high note. And Eric, I'm going to ask that you lead us, lead us through this song, and then we'll be dismissed this morning. Amen? God bless you. Let's go tell it on the mountain. Go tell it on the mountain. All of the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. That Jesus Christ is born While shepherds kept their watching All silent lights by night Behold throughout the heavens There shone a glorious night Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born the sh
If you haven't received uh, an ornament, the Gateway Church, we just celebrated 10 years of ministry. Feel free to take one of those. There's a few mugs on the uh, tables. You can take those as well. God bless you. Go in the grace of God. Merry Christmas. And next Sunday, let's be back to worship the day that we celebrate Christmas, Jesus' birth. Amen? Amen. God bless you as you go. Tell it all.